Welcome back to the show. Uh, our next guest, you ask her a question, you get a great story every single time. Uh, she has become such a marvelous advocate for uh, artists and culture here on the west coast of Canada, and for that matter, around the world as well. And she's got, I believe, three articles in uh, Wallpaper Magazine. Yes, she does. Hadani Ditmars is joining us now, fresh off the plane from yes. Buenos Aires. How are you? <laughs> How is Argentina? Uh, muy bien. Muchas gracias. Yes, so, yes. what kind of adventure did you have there? Because you always have an adventure. Well... Uh, it was a brief 10-day trip. I was a volunteer for an NGO that was having a conference in the north of Argentina, in Gaucho country. But little did I know that I would be trapped for two days in the George Bush International <laughs> in Houston. Why were you trapped um, there? What happened? There was a volcano in Patagonia, and there was all this volcanic ash. Oh, wow. So and you're in the George Bush International so Airport. Yes, for two days. <laughs> How did you entertain yourself? Well, I ran into an architect um, from Buenos Aires who lived in L.A. and taught in between L.A. and Buenos Aires, and he was trying to get to a lecture. And he turned out to be the protege of Julius Schulman. He was also an architectural photographer. So we hung out for two days at the George Bush International. And, and, <laughs> and just talked, talked architecture. architecture. That's almost like a dream for you, Hadani. That's like... Well, there was a brief excursion to an airport hotel where um, we arrived at 1 in the morning. And the only place to eat in, the, in this weird area in the no man's land of Houston turned out to be a strip bar. Awesome. So we were discussing architecture and Julius Schulman while this woman was, you know, <laughs> it, it was very surreal, the whole thing. I got to Buenos Aires after an all-night flight, and there was a huelga. The Air Force had taken over the air traffic controllers union because of the whole military yeah, syndicato yeah. thing. And so then I was trapped all day in the Aeroparque. Uh, which was recently commemorated because I had a massacre there uh, in the 70s. Uh, and I, I could sort of relate to that after having spent eight hours in the Aeroparque. Then I took the all-night <laughs> bus to Mina, Mina Clavero, uh, where this conference was happening. But on my way back, I had a really interesting kind of... I, I was on some kind of architectural trail. I mean, my camera was stolen when I was waiting for eight hours in the Retiro bus station on my way to the all-night bus. And that's quite common. <laughs> but I'd taken it to Baghdad five times and nothing had happened. Yeah, so Only you thought, so, this will be safe, this will be fine. So on my last day, which was just, when was that, yesterday or two days ago? <laughs> I, I don't remember. I, I went to, um, the, the, I, 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 things were going not well until I went to the Metropolitana Cathedral, the main cathedral. And I went to Mass on Sunday and I m made... Uh, special prayers and intercession at all the statues of all the saints and all the virgins, especially La Virgen de Luján, who's the patron saint of Argentina. And after that, everything was really cool. <laughs> See, that's um, all you needed to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And so um, what happened was the next day I went to the Canadian Embassy and had a wonderful chat with a cultural attaché there. There's a book fair going on in April. It's one of the biggest in the world. And they're hoping that Leonard Cohen will come. So they want me to go back as a Canadian writer, and they're trying to uh, find Translate, a, 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 a translator no for Dancing in the No-Fly Zone. So all these things oh, came wow. together, and there's a Leonard Cohen song in my book, yeah. the Stories <laughs> of the Street. So it kind of all came together at the last minute. And then I went to visit, I thought, the last thing I have to do in Buenos Aires is visit the, the tomb, La Tumba de Evita. So oh, yeah. I went to this very nice part of town, where the Recoleta, where they have the tomb of Evita. And I, I, so I, so I'd, I'd, I'd said my prayers to the Virgin of Luján, and then I had to go to, you know, right. Evita. <laughs> and so I was coming out of there, and I, I thought, I'm going to do one last check at the Retiro bus station for... Don't tell me you found my, your camera. My camera. No, and as I was getting into a taxi, this beautiful, tall, dark Argent Argentine man was coming out of the taxi, and he opened the door for me, and he said, are you from Vancouver? Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, that, and I had no time to register it because I was going to find my camera. So uh, along the way, oh, there's the gaucho hat. I the was going to say, driver, I have your camera. The taxi driver <laughs> who has like a very special role in Buenos Aires, he's like in between a priest and a social worker, he kept telling me, why did you run away from that man? He could have been your destiny. Uh. <laughs> you know what? He so, might be right. So the taxi driver takes my card and takes it back to the guy because he knows the hotel he's staying at. <laughs> Don't tell me. And I'm going through like this whole thing at the Retiro bus station. I'd befriended the man that ran the internet cafe, the guy that <laughs> did the, the, the luggage. And they were all very friendly, very happy to see me, very sorry about the camera, offered me mate. But of course, they said, go to the police commissioner and talk to him. Right. And, you know, yeah. no, 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 we don't have a camera. But you know, it was kind of a friendly making thing. On the way back, I get this uh, text message from this guy, Alfredo. And he said, it's so strange that I ran into you because I know people in Vancouver. And so we had this very brief meeting for 10 minutes. 
It turns out he's a very famous designer from Zurich. He's an Argentine living in Zurich. He's Alfredo Haberly, <laughs> who's been interviewed by Wallpaper, and we know the same people. Yeah. By yeah. the same yeah. magazine and that you It was really for. strange. Yeah, yeah. So there was, I was on some kind of architectural you're trail. You're always on now, some kind of, your whole life is on this architectural trail. That'll bring us to trail. the December issue yes, yes. of Wallpaper magazine. I'm trying to stop meeting architects. <laughs> I know, but you just, you wrote <laughs> about uh, a wonderful Dan architect, White. Dan yeah. White, who hasn't had a lot of attention, but maybe yes. you can tell us a little bit about him. Yes. As we look at some pictures of his yeah. work. Well, Dan is this extraordinary undersung West Coast architect who just had this rigorous modernism, even at a time when modernism was not in style. I mean, in, yeah, in, the, in the 70s 80s, and 80s, yeah. when you remember the sort of the postmodern sort of fussy flourishes, yeah. he was yeah. not doing that. And he just stuck to his guns and he had a vision and he has these amazing sites that he worked on that you can't really work on anymore. I think the Taylor House is one of the... Yeah, there it is in West Bend. I mean, it's built over top of a ravine and a creek. Basically. Yes. I mean, and it's stunning. You can't build that close to the water anymore. I don't know if you have a picture of the edge of it. But um, yeah. so, so Dan was, a, was really ahead of his time in lots of ways. But he, he was so not into any kind of self-promotion. And he has all these hand-drawn sketches. Nothing was computer-generated. Wow. So it was quite a challenge. Uh, I worked with uh, Russell from his office and, and, yeah. and um, also Martin Lewis. Digging into the balls. Well, have the opportunity, I mean, like you say, for someone that's virtually unsung around the world, but obviously has had an impact and, and was impacted from Arthur Erickson and then paid that forward to yeah. have a chance to capture some of his work and really get inside that. It's fascinating. Yeah, and I, I really felt honored that I was asked to write it. I mean, I did pitch it to them, but uh, the fact that, you know, uh, this icon section really celebrates architects um, from around the world who have that iconic status. Yeah. So I, I felt like, oh, this is this is our patrimony, you know, this this kind <laughs> of West Coast modernism. And an we unsung need to, hero, too. We need to sing it. We need yeah. to celebrate Absolutely. it. We need to protect it as well, you know? Yeah. Let's look so. at some of his other uh, works. I'm not sure which one we've got next. Uh, I think we have, that's the water view of the Taylor House, right, that you were talking about. That's the front view of the Taylor House. Beautiful. Yes, which was built for a bridge engineer, so. Unbelievable. Oh, and this is the, the little Gallina. kind of, the cabin, if you can call it that. It's the version of the traditional log cabin. <laughs> it's uh, vertical instead of horizontal. Mantle. And there's sort of three buildings like a, attached that are the same style. It's uh, designed as a hexagon, um, wow. but there's there's three and what a different way of thinking at it. the time it was built too. People were just not doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, his his work is uh, like deceptively simple and yet really complex, and uh, it's yeah. um, but suits its environment wherever it is. Very connected to the site. Very deeply uh, connected. to The, the site. other thing you've been writing about uh, that's very local as well is is what's going on in Surrey, and, and we had Mary Surrey, Diane Watts yes. on. Yes. Uh, to talk about Bing yes. Tom's uh, library that's going up in Surrey that's just mind-blowing. Well, if you read the December issue of Metropolis, I have a story on Surrey as kind of hub for public architecture. Yeah. Because really... Who would have thunk it? <laughs> Nobody. Well, th there's a lot of land. It's cheaper yeah. than in Vancouver, and there's less restrictive bylaws. So it kind of makes sense. Plus, you know, Bing Tom was really in the lead with his... Um, University meets shopping mall, and then now with right. this amazing library. Uh, and of course, there's a whole city plan, as you know, for um, creating a real hub for public architecture there and a whole new vision for the city. Hey, Danny, so. dare I ask what you're going to be up to next? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> After I sleep. Um, <laughs> well, I'm working on another book on ancient sites in Iraq, um, which is called Ancient Heart Seven Sites in Modern Day Iraq, because when I was um, an editor at New Internationalist magazine and did this whole issue on Iraq seven years after the invasion in 2010, I met an architect in Baghdad who of used to work with yeah, Arthur Erickson yeah. when calling. he was there in the late 70s yeah. designing uh, a whole new um, cityscape around Abu Nawas and a whole cultural center, which was partly inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's drawings in the 50s. Yeah. Now, this architect I met insisted on taking me around to the most dangerous areas <laughs> to see examples of modernist buildings and also um, ancient shrines that were in the middle of garbage dump meet, meets sort of displaced person camps, like that, that scene from Planet of the Apes where yeah. Charlton Heston sees the Statue of Liberty yeah. on the beach. That's what this that's is That's what like. it was like. And I thought, my God, all this important architectural heritage, which is not only Iraqi, but our world heritage, the cradle of civilization, is just yeah. being neglected, and being that's destroyed. Going to be a book? Yeah. Um, that's my next book. It's called Ancient Heart, and um, <clears throat> hopefully um, the publishing wing of Metropolis, the magazine, is going to be publishing it. But we're looking for a sugar daddy. We're looking for um, <laughs> an institute that cares about ancient sites in Iraq because yeah. it's so dangerous now that 
It's it, very difficult to do cheap, independent I was going to say really expensive to get there and get access so, to it. And, and inshallah, if anyone's listening yeah. <laughs> and wants to sponsor us, it's a very important thing. I mean, there's a Burger King in Babylon, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, the military, it became a military depot, and ancient ruins were had tanks rolling over them. So, you wow. know, this is about us. It's about our civilization. This is about it's important. It for everyone. Well, yeah. Hanani, always so nice to catch up with you. Uh, and, of course, you can find Hadani's work in all of these publications. Everywhere. Yeah, that's right. We <laughs> you have can also go to her website to find out more at sadanidetmars.com. We're going to take a quick break.